start by asking you a question. What's the first word that comes to mind when you think of an entrepreneur? Think of a founder of a startup that became a unicorn valued over $1 billion, you know, the incredibly successful ones. Most people would say genius, passionate, well-connected, maybe even crazy. Most people think of Harvard dropouts that code in their parents' garage. I'm here today to debunk this myth, or dare I say, this bias. I wanna break this mythical archetype of what a successful startup founder is and shed light instead on what specific qualities investors look for when funding startups. Then I'll end by giving you some tactical suggestions for how to make sure you have those qualities before walking into the pitch meeting. Let me start with a story of my experience working in venture capital, hearing pitch after pitch from startup founders, and then going into the Monday partner meeting, hearing the reasoning why that founder is either getting a check or getting the, sorry, we like you, but your company is out of thesis for us email. At the beginning, I would hear a pitch and write up an email with the potential market size, competitors, risks, synergies with portfolio companies, pricing strategy, thesis fit, founding team, advisory team, initial traction, customer set, the list goes on. I would send it off to my manager, proud with how robust the diligence was. And then I would get the email back, trimmed down to purely thesis fit and founding team, specifically what schools the founding team attended and what major they studied at that school. This confused me at first. How could they ignore so much information when making an investment and just look at the founding team? And then I realized investors are investing in the founders, not in the business or the idea. So then the next question becomes, what exactly is it that investors look for in the founding team? The answer is, what undergrad or graduate school did they go to? What did they major in? Are they repeat founders? Regardless of the success of that prior venture, by the way, did they work at a prestigious company, et cetera? Then, once the pitch is over, the questions become, did they seem mature during their pitch? Did they get stumped when we asked them hard questions, et cetera? This irked me. One, because admittedly, I myself didn't go to an undergrad Ivy League school and didn't major in computer science. But two, because I found it hard to believe that going to an Ivy League school and being mature were the greatest indicators of being a successful entrepreneur. So I decided to dive deeper into this. I used PitchBook to do some original research around the backgrounds of top unicorn founders. I looked at all US-based startups that are or have been in the past VC backed. I filtered for companies founded after 2000 to focus on the most recent unicorns and then filtered based on PitchBook's last known valuation field to see the highest valued unicorns. These companies ranged from over $20 billion in valuation to over $150 billion valuations. Regardless of whether you think they are good founders or not, they are undoubtedly wealthy ones. The companies include the well-known Stripe, SpaceX, Coinbase, Pinterest, Databricks, Waymo, Uber, Chime, and more. I then took a look at their founders, where they went to school, what they studied, if they were repeat founders, and more. Here's what I found. You certainly see a lot of Ivy Leagues on the list. You have the Stripe founders who were brothers that went to both Harvard and MIT. You have your Robinhood, LinkedIn, Roblox, and Palantir founders that are all Stanford alums. Then you have Coinbase, Tesla, Instacart, UiPath, Slack, Chime, and Lyft that went to schools like Rice, Duke, University of Illinois, University of Waterloo, University of Bucharest, University of Victoria, Tulane, and UC in Santa Barbara. Clearly not all unicorn founders are Harvard dropouts. You also certainly see a lot where they're major related to the company they started. You have the Rivian founder with a PhD in mechanical engineering. You have the Facebook, Roblox, Databricks, Snowflake, Waymo, and UiPath founders that studied computer science, which generally fits with building software as they did. But then you have the Stripe founders who were physics majors. You have the Robinhood founders that were math majors. 
You have the Pinterest founders that were political science and architecture majors. You have the Instacart and Uber founders who were electrical engineering majors. The Slack and Palantir founders were philosophy majors. And then you have the Chime founder that was a history major. And you have one of the Lyft founders that attended the Cornell University School of Hotel Administration. I guess you can say Lyft provides great hospitality as do hotels, but still all great examples of founders where their majors probably not what gave them the skill set to be great unicorn founders. You also certainly see a lot of repeat founders, but you also have a Porva Meta who founded Instacart, but also founded 20 startups prior to that, that all failed. You also have plenty of founders like the Chime founders that have never founded startups before. So the question of being a repeat founder is also not a direct indicator of being a unicorn founder. Let me also point out that these are all also white men founders. So there's definitely some pattern matching going on there as well, but not all of these companies were founded pre-2015. And the VC landscape has been changing towards more diverse Black, Latinx, and female founders in recent years. But regardless, back to the question, where's the disconnect? Why is it that in VC, we look at what school they went to, what they majored in, and whether they were repeat founders, and yet there are plenty of unicorn founders who don't fit this mold. Why is it that founders continue to get funding even when they don't fit this mold? Could it be these very narrow questions aren't really what's being judged? To get straight to the point, in the world of VC and entrepreneurship, it is less about your capabilities and qualifications and more about how your personality is perceived. Getting funding and being a unicorn founder is more about presence than it is about competency. A study presented in the Hawaii International Conference on System Sciences, along with a wealth of other literature out there with rich evidence suggests hubris and charisma are essential for raising money since they trigger intuitive decision-making processes. Even further, hubristic and charismatic entrepreneurs are more successful in sourcing capital since they are perceived as more trustworthy and passionate. Now then the question becomes, why does hubris and charisma matter? I propose we answer this by going back to what the fundamental job is of a founder using the jobs to be done framework. Once you think about it, the founder's job is one, raise money, two, find co-founders and hire employees, and three, maybe close a few initial sales. Thinking about it this way, then debunks our myth that you have to be a genius coder or engineer to be a founder. Yes, some founders start out by building the product themselves, but many don't. The core need of a founder to raise money, hire people, and close sales comes down to personality and presence during those conversations, specifically a level of hubris, charisma, and even a level of arrogance that comes across in those meetings. There isn't a major for that. For some people, this comes naturally, and for others, it's learned. The other misconception is that you have to be all of these things and likable. There are plenty of examples where this isn't the case. Just think of Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk. They aren't liked, but they have hubris, presence, and a level of arrogance that makes them great founders that it can attract top talent and funding. Now, the good news. You can lack competency and still get that check. You can lack an Ivy League education and still get that check. You don't have to be a computer science genius to be a unicorn founder. All of this is true. But what does it really mean for the wannabe founders out there? All you need is presence. So here's the practical advice. Get presence training. Get personal coaching. Get feedback on how you're experienced by colleagues and classmates. Update your wardrobe. Hone in on that hubris and charisma and make sure that personality gets perceived as such during pitches, recruiting calls, and sales meetings. As shallow as this sounds, the entrepreneurship journey is fundamentally emotional. 
perception, perception, perception. Now, one last thing before we go. This was an analysis performed on companies founded prior to 2015. Today we are living in 2021, almost 2022. This is past the era of hashtag me too, in the middle of COVID. There is an immense amount of money flowing towards early stage VC deals and a record number of deals being done with even more exit opportunities given the SPACs happening. The next round of unicorns may look fundamentally different with a big shift in diversity, both in founders getting funding, but also in the VCs who are writing checks, we may see a whole new set of criteria and founder backgrounds. With a big focus on tough tech, things like crypto and AI, environmental sustainability, renewable energy, the expertise of the founder may play a bigger role than previously during the era of pure software startups. Regardless, I believe and hope that more diverse unicorn founders can pave the way and break the pattern matching that exists among BT check writing. But I can certainly tell you how your personality is perceived will never stop being front and center of the founder journey. Thank you.